Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Hoffman Reproductions. Good to be with everybody today. Well, another video, another musket, and no, it's not an English musket. If you're a fan of the French firearms, you're going to find this one interesting. This is a early 18th century, late 17th century French grenadier musket. Uh, this particular gun was uh, built by myself through parts purchased through Loyalist Arms that we've covered in previous videos. They're a company that is based in Nova Scotia and imports their parts. And uh, that's the uh, platform of this one here today. The history on this particular musket, and this is one that uh, saw use here in North America, probably the best uh, reference I can give you to it is not my own word, but that of another. And this lovely little book here. This is uh, the French Fusil de Tool in New France by Russell ba Bouchard, or Bouchard, however you pronounce his name. I apologize to that individual if I got that wrong. But uh, it goes into detail about this gun. On page 16, it states um, The Grenadier musket, from strictly a technical point of view, uh, differs from the common musket only by swivel ring and center barrel band. It got its name from the military corps formed in the 1660s whose main function was to throw grenades at the enemy force. The sling allowed the gun to be carried on the back to carry out this maneuver. In Canada, the first grenadier muskets appear at the end of the 17th century. Their usefulness is explained by the difficulties encountered in the military operations quite often caused by peculiarities of terrain and excessively vast spaces quickly the grenadier musket became the shoulder weapon preferred by uh, various French companies and units back then. Uh, it goes into further detail about um, various production times and whatnot that were carried out with this gun but the very first time that this musket appears on the scene in North America is in 1695 and it saw production up until about 1729. So um, by that reference there, we know that, that they did indeed exist in North America. And even though by the time period of the French and Indian War and later American Revolution, this gun would have been considered outdated, if it was in good working condition, it was not cast aside though. Um, if the military had better more modern versions of guns coming out, which just like today, they did. These would be sold off as surplus to militia units, I'm sure traded to Native Americans who were loyal to the French, and one or two may have um, ended up in the hands of a colonist during the uh, French and Indian or Revolutionary War. So even though outdated by uh, the mid-1700s, still if it was functioning, they weren't going to get rid of it. It would find use uh, in another individual other than perhaps the most modern military uh, accoutrements and individuals using these of the time period. But uh, as I said, this one was built from Loyalist Arms Parts. They're a company based out of Nova Scotia that I occasionally will purchase parts through. Um, the stock on this gun is uh, made of teak. Um, teak, when handled correctly and stained correctly, very much has the appearance of walnut, so this is actually not quite as dark as it looks on film. It's a dark reddish brown, very good match to walnut. All of the mounts on the gun are iron, as they would have been originally, and it has a uh, sling with the swivels, as mentioned in the text, so that it can be thrown over the shoulder. The barrel on this uh, gun is 65 caliber. Uh, octagonal to round barrel, 44 and a half inches long, and the lock has uh, early lock markings on it, also the barrel that I've copied from the originals, and uh, even though, again, outdated by the time of the uh, mid-18th century, still an effective weapon. The weight of it is a little less than a brown best musket. This one weighs in at 10 pounds uh, flat. So a little bit less, just by a couple ounces, than a brown best of the same time period. And um, the muzzle end, you'll notice the stock is nearly all the way to the muzzle. So in this time period, they were using what were called plug bayonets. Now a plug bayonet is nothing more 
than essentially a large dagger with a rounded handle that would fit down the barrel of your gun and thus turn your musket, if it was empty, into a spear, which in the time of single shot weapons that could be very useful and practical. So even though, um, again, considered outdated, still an effective weapon top to bottom. So before we end this video, none of these would be complete without live firing the gun, so we're going to take a trip over to the shooting range and put a live uh, few rounds through the gun. So stay tuned, that's up next. Alright, so we've got a target set up about 30 yards away. I'm going to be firing a pretty light load here, only about 60 grains and uh, not expecting a whole lot for accuracy because I'm shooting a bullet that's very much undersized for this gun, but it's the mold that I have. It's the only one that was close to this. So it's about a 58 caliber bullet with a heavy cloth patch. So um, unlike previous videos, I'm going to load this one from the pouch using, as I stated, patch and round ball. I am going to use a cartridge just to charge with. And this is about 65 grains of 3F. Cotton patch that I'm going to just get wet in my mouth for the uh, lubrication. And a 58 caliber round ball. You give up a little bit of accuracy when loading them this loose, but if you're just plinking or whatever, it sure is nice to be able to slide the bullet down without too much effort. A little bit of priming. And uh, we'll see if we can punch a hole in it. Yeah, I think I hit it. I don't, I don't really believe I drilled the bullseye with it, but I did hit it. So we'll try another shot. Some up close shots before we go, if you don't mind my shaky hand showing the French musket in its natural environment out in the woods, ready to uh, fend off pesky British settlers or troublesome Native Americans should the need arise. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And to our new watchers, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you'll keep current with our videos. And we'll see everybody on the next one. Thanks so much.